Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Building trust in your intuition. Oh, here's a fun little topic. Uh, this one's kind of something that well, I've spent years working on. Um, and there's still times, by the way, lots of times for that matter, uh, when I'm reasonably sure my intuition's working, but I still am not totally trusting. And I think that's typically a good sign, by the way, at least from my standpoint. And I'll try to get into that a little bit. Gonna be a generally not a really long video. Uh, I can do further stuff on this down the road, but I'm trying to really take this from a very beginner kind of standpoint. Uh, for those of you that are already kind of into your intuition, have practiced it, maybe you do tarot, maybe you do healing, maybe you do whatever, right? You've got your your things. You've kind of already gotten into this. Eh, we can do more advanced stuff down the road. Uh, if you've got things to share or comments to make, please, by all means, comment in here because there's a lot of very helpful advice that can come from any number of the people in this community when it comes to helping build that intuitive aspect, that part of us that feels. And really, that is the stuff that starts to come from the higher chakra levels. I've talked about chakras in some of uh, my other videos. You can certainly search the word chakra on my channel. You'll find a number of different videos that I've done. When we're dealing with the chakras, typically I speak of the seven chakra system. There's a 12 system. There's probably some others, but I don't really know the 12 all that well. I know the seven uh, reasonably well. That's kind of what I was comfortable growing up with. And there's seven colors in the rainbow. So I don't know. I just kind of like it. It's kind of a, a neat one for me. That being said, when we get through the lower chakras, the first three chakras, chakra one, two, and three, root, uh, solar plex, and um, uh, what's there's the one in between, and I'm totally failing on it. Whatever. You got the three lower ones. Uh, once you get past those, you actually start to get into the ones where really, I think intuition starts to truly come into play. First one's the fourth chakra, which is heart. Uh, fifth is what throat speaking. Uh, the sixth is the, the uh, third eye, right? Fourth, fifth, sixth. And then the crown's the, uh, the higher, the uh, seventh chakra up top. These are the places that typically your intuition will be experienced, will be felt. Felt, seen if it's coming in your third eye. Uh, you might get words or you just feel uh, heat sometimes on your upper chakra when you're dealing with uh, kind of receiving. Uh, a lot of times the words may just come out. So maybe you're a talker kind of like me. So a lot of times I'll channel into a uh, like a recorder. I, like I've said before, I've got a thing called Dictadroid and I can just dictate into my phone. So I use that. Talking works for me and I can kind of just start talking and blah and then stuff just comes out. And so it's one way to uh, get in touch with your intuition. And again, to the fourth chakra, you'll feel it in your heart very frequently. So these are places where intuition will rise up within you. Okay. And so that's usually a very helpful aspect of, of how we kind of get to that place. Now, so understanding that it's going to be something that comes in as a very almost still soft voice. It's something that's going to maybe be a whisper, something that you're just going to know. Uh, just It'll hit you. Uh, it'll hit you in a way that you're like, you're not thinking about it. It's not going to be one of those things where what's so-and-so thinking. And then, uh, well, it can come in different places where you may say what's so-and-so thinking. And if it pops into you immediately, that could be it right there. If you're putting any additional effort into it, if you're thinking about it at all, if you're spending any time with it, it's probably no longer intuition. Uh, the thinking process has taken place. So most of the time, it's one of those things that just kind of pops in there. It just hits you, and there's really no reason for it. It's not like I was just thinking about it. It's kind of out of left field. It'll kind of hit you. You'll feel it sometimes. Maybe you'll you'll get a vision that'll accompany it. Maybe words you'll hear, like certain phrases will pop in there. And that's usually a good sign that you're on the right track. Again, if you spend any time with it and think about it, almost always invariably you lose it and you start going down the thought process. That's why a lot of the times they say, what was your first reaction or what was your first thought? That's right. It's the thoughts that follow your first thought where we ruin most of our intuition. So it's noticing that first thought. It's noticing it and going, huh, I wonder what that was. Like, it just giving it the credit for it is don't it's not necessarily right it's not necessarily wrong don't make any assumptions about it but at that point it's like well i've been given a piece of information that might or might not be intuition let's see if i can test this factual information so maybe something came to you you might be able to check with a friend hey were you just thinking about me you just popped into my head and i swear i thought you were you know maybe you're worried about school or something it just felt like you were and they're like oh my god you're totally right or Maybe a specific someone you're interested in, you might get this weird nervous feeling all of a sudden and they pop into your head and you're like, oh, what's going on? And maybe you text them, you're like, is everything okay? And they're like, oh my God, I just got scared. Something happened. Or 
or that nervousness may happen and, and you might reach out to them and, and they might say, no, no, everything's fine. Nothing happened. And, and at those times, that's when you've got to go, okay, maybe, maybe it wasn't intuition. Maybe that was me. Because again, it's a very fine line that you will learn, that you will practice. A lot of people want to do readings on themselves or something very close to them when they first start playing around with intuition. I will tell you right now, those are the hardest things to do readings on. It is extremely hard to do readings on yourself, at least through conventional means, through feelings and all those things, because we're so closely connected to what's going on that we have a lot of biases and we have a lot of uh, predefined or pre-believed things about the situation that cloud our filter, that affect our read on it, that affect the information that we're getting. It's coming through an odd filter that we've created. And so the second it hits our higher selves, if you will, and travels through the chakras, it now gets distorted. So those are typically some of the harder areas to get better at with your intuition. A lot of you I know will want to make it work there. And unfortunately, it truly is one of the more challenging places to get that to work. Where it works really well is with others. And there's a few caveats as well. So one, obviously you can verify, which is fun. Uh, hopefully it's with a friend that uh, is sort of open to that kind of stuff. Uh, and those are the better friends to try to experience this with. Um, hopefully it is uh, situations that they're comfortable talking about because sometimes it can be embarrassing. You might be calling them on something that they don't want to admit to. I've seen that happen many a time where honestly, I was reasonably confident that I was right for reasons that you'll get better at, I promise, um, but still wasn't able to get any sort of confirmation. It's just one of those things where you walk away and you're just like, all right, whatever. You're not always going to get confirmation. There's going to be times where you're thinking you're right, and there's going to be times where you're not sure you're right, and sometimes you'll get confirmation, sometimes you won't. One of the real key differentiators for me, one of the key areas that really helps me feel confident that I just received intuitive information that's accurate is I don't care about it. That is almost the best way to know that you've probably got accurate information. You're not attached to the results. That's why, again, it's so hard to read for yourself. So you're trying to, someone asks you, what do you think about such and such? Or what do you think is going on with so-and-so? He did this the other day and it just hits you and you're like, I don't know. Sounds like he's confused. I don't really know what's going on with them. I feel like he's maybe got another option in front of him. And you're like, whoa, I don't even know where that came from. And you're like, I don't really care uh, if it's right or wrong. I don't care if I'm, uh, if I'm, passing on information that's correct or not. And it's not that you want it to be wrong and it's not that you want it to be right. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's that you don't care. It's, I, I just, blah, just spit out of my mouth. Again, if you're thinking about it, you've already going to ruin it. It's already going to mess it up. So the friend asks you and you just start talking and that's what comes out. And you're not attached to the results of what you said, meaning your ego doesn't need to be right. Meaning it doesn't matter if you're right. In fact, a lot of times you'd be like, I don't even know if that's right, but I don't know. You know, that's like, and again, you'll just be like, ah, that's what came out of me. A lot of the times that is where intuition pops out. It is that very subtle, very soft. I don't know if that's right. It's that place where a lot of this will come from. And it, to me, it seems, and, and other people's experiences are going to be very different, I'm sure. But to me, it seems that whenever it has mattered to me, the readings have been harder to come by from myself. Now, there's other techniques I've used, and I can talk about some of those. I, I've talked about one, the, the stress test with the fingers, right? Uh, and I, someone's going to ask me where that shows, and I don't know if I can find it, frankly. I've, I've tried before and just have a very hard time finding some of these shows I've done. I've done, I think this is my 511th uh, video I've done, somewhere around there anyway, plus or minus a few. So again, sometimes hard to come by, but there are other means that you can use to try to read yourself, and we can certainly get into some of those in future shows. But again, that's a very basic, very beginner kind of thing to keep in mind. One, they're going to come from the higher chakras. Chakras four through seven, you're going to feel it in some way, either in your gut, in your heart. Words will pop out something, like it's just the way you'll talk. You'll get some sort of image in your mind's eye, as they call it. Or you might get some sort of thought or feeling that comes through kind of your higher, higher chakra, your crown chakra, right? It'll come through one of those areas. A lot of the times... It'll just be random, weird, kind of out of the blue. It, you'll feel detached from it. You won't really care. You're just sharing what just popped through. 
Again, that's kind of how these channeling sorts of things come through. That's how we kind of evolve and develop that intuition, that sixth sense, that feeling about things. And some authors have talked about the great leap, and I speak about this frequently because it's just to me is one of the most amazing parts of our spiritual journey when we finally cross the great leap. And that is literally when you go from the third chakra, operating, I should say, on the third chakra, to operating from a fourth chakra. And the difference is third chakra, it's a gut feeling, but you've got physical uh, information to back up what you're feeling in your gut. Maybe it's weird, it's oddly dark, it's quiet, you're hearing noises, right? There's additional information that's physical that you can process and say, yes, I think there's a reason to be concerned. I hear growling in the background. That's a bad sign, right? Like maybe I should start backing away from wherever the horrible place I just walked into. But when it comes to the perceptions of things, you don't have that. You have a feeling. And the great leap is when you do something based off a of feeling, even though you've been given no actual solid, real evidence in the physical world that this is going to work or that this is correct or that what you're thinking is right. But the feeling is so strong that you can't ignore it. And every time you try, it nags you. That is the great leap because you end up doing that thing because of how you feel. And then you experience the outcome from it. And you realize, oh, feelings are where it's at. That's how this stuff is shown to us. And you might be more of a mental person. You might be more of an audio person audio person, you might be more of a, a, a vis, uh, what, visual, audio, uh, whatever speaking is, like, right, whatever your uh, maybe more touch, tactile, right, I'm used to, I need to feel it, right, so you may feel things in a certain way, these areas will come through, and as you start operating from those higher chakra levels, the intuition gets stronger, and gets more attuned, and gets more chimed in, you burn through more of these internal karmic things that we've got as you align your chakras, as you activate your chakras and move through them. And the intuition aspect gets significantly more profound the further and further you travel through these cycles and the more you kind of learn to trust and play with it. So intuition is that soft voice and it is something that we practice and get better at. And it is something that you're going to be wrong. Even when you've done it for years and years and you're right often, you're still going to be wrong from time to time. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's people that are maybe getting close to right 100% of the time, but I doubt any one of the truly spiritual guru type people that have gotten to that level would actually admit to the fact that they're right all the time because I don't think any of us ever feel comfortable saying that. And just the concept of right and wrong is something that you start to shed anyway because things are what they are. Whether I've got... A, a judgment on its rightness or wrongness is sort of a, a secondary thing. It is what it is. Whether it's right or wrong, ah, we can figure that out tomorrow. But right now, this is happening. It's kind of helpful when we start to realize it from that standpoint as well. Kind of takes on a different meaning, and we stop sort of applying that filter of right and wrong to all the things that happen in our life. Weird topic, I know, but I had it written down, and it's like I wanted to try to take a stab at this. We'll see where this goes. I'm certainly going to try to do other shows on this. I'm trying to help round out all of our abilities, right? I mean, that's ultimately what we're here to do is try to grow and evolve spiritually, I'm hoping. And then we've got these cool law of attraction things that also come into play. But by the way, getting your chakras aligned helps very much with your manifestation. And I look forward to people's comments in here that do talk about that specifically, because as you find, and I think most people will echo what I'm saying, and here's what I'm hoping for help, but as you find and you awaken your inner inner senses and you really get your chakras aligned, things start to fall in line in very awesome ways, and it is definitely tied together. And yes, you're still using the same techniques in Law of Attraction, but you'll actually find that your manifestation speed is quicker, and your doubts tend to be a little less uh, is pervasive, a little less often, maybe, because you kind of realize that there's more of an ebb and flow. You feel more connected to source and universe. You experience universe uh, in a very different way when you start to open up these extra chakras. 
I hope this helps. I know this is a weird video. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's Dan Radio Style. Thanks so much. If you like what uh, what I've been doing, please click subscribe. Do the little bell icon. You'll know whenever I uh, post videos, and I always appreciate that. I just, again, thank you for being part of the community. Please post comments. Do the thumbs up and all that good stuff, if applicable, and if you've got something awesome to share. Uh, it's fun to see the comments and the way that some of them take uh, life of their own. And I've seen a lot of people help each other in the comments section on these videos. So it's a great uh, thing that kind of, you know, share amongst all of us. So thank you so much, everybody. It's Dan Radio Style. Love all of you. Thanks.